Well, it seems that our stratosphere experienced a sudden warming around the 10th to the 13th of January, and this caused the polar vortex to actually split in two. Now, this article was published on the Daily Cos on the 16th of January, 2013. And it goes on to say that sudden stratospheric warming has split the polar vortex in two. The polar vortex, which forms and deepens as the atmosphere loses heat to space in the darkness of the long Arctic winter night, was split in two by massive heating from below. A series of intense storms in the far North Pacific intensified a very long wave in the lower atmosphere. Energy on that planet-sized wave went upwards from the lower atmosphere around the Himalayas and Tibetan Plateau and broke into the stratosphere, causing major sudden warming. It rapidly reversed the strong cyclonic winds in the stratosphere around the pole, creating a central dome and breaking the vortex into two smaller vortices. We can see the splitting by making a map of the heights a weather balloon rises to reach the very low atmospheric pressure of 50 millibars. A standard atmosphere is 1,013 millibars. So it shows you here on the 1st and, or the 1st to the 3rd of January, the vortex is intact. And then it shows you the 10th to the 13th of January, and we can see that the polar vortex has actually split in two. Major stratospheric warmings have taken place on average every other year over the past 50 years. The physics of these warmings is very complicated. Since 1998, these warmings have been more frequent and earlier in the winter. Previously, major warmings typically happened in February. Over the past decade, they have happened in December and January. But this one is exceptional on all counts. This stratospheric warming is apparently the strongest ever observed in the first half of January, according to the NOAA figure. No one knows why the number of major warmings is increasing, but a correlation has been with positive sea surface temperature anomalies and the active phase of the solar cycle. This year, the sun is active and there are large positive sea surface temperature anomalies in the North Indian Ocean and the North West Pacific. The dynamical activity in recent winters reveals that the frequency of MWs, major warmings, in the Arctic is increasing. So it shows you some statistics here about how much it is increasing. And it goes on to say that major stratospheric warming events like these have a large impact on weather. The warm air in the stratosphere radiates heat and sinks then warms as it sinks by compressional heating. It causes a mound of relatively warm air and high pressure to develop around the pole. Cold air is pushed away from the pole, in this case under the two vortices. In the Pacific Ocean, the dynamic interaction of the cold air with abnormally warm water off the northeast coast of Japan developed one of the strongest North Pacific storms in many years with a central pressure of 932 millibars, as low as a major hurricane, and modelled wave heights of over 60 feet. At its most intense point, the storm had an air pressure reading of about 932 millibytes, roughly equivalent to a Category 4 hurricane, and more intense than Hurricane Sandy as that storm moved towards the New Jersey coastline in October. In general, the lower the air pressure, the stronger the storm. The storm's central pressure plunged by 48 to 49 millibytes uh, in just 24 hours, making it one of the most rapidly intensifying storms at a mean latitude of 34 degrees north since 1979, according to a data analysis by Weatherbell Analytics. Okay, so they're just giving you some information about that cyclone or that hurricane, as you guys call them, in the Northern Hemisphere. 
And so it goes on to say that the swell will generate massive waves. So all the surfers will be very happy about that. Uh, you'll be getting massive waves on the north and west shores of the Hawaiian Islands. And NOAA's outstanding surf forecaster, Pat Caldwell, is forecasting 24-foot wave face heights without the amplifying effects of refraction by the sea floor. In surf spots, refraction can double these wave heights. 50-foot wave faces are possible on Friday at Outer Reef, reef on uh, Kuai and Ahu. I hope I said that right. Okay, the vortex over North America has been pushing cold air over the United States. Multiple outbreaks of Arctic air can be expected over the eastern half of the US and Canada over the next 10 days. A winter storm developing now over the southern Appalachians is forecast to bring snow to the DC area tomorrow afternoon. Then the storm is predicted to intensify over the North Atlantic. This amplifying energy of the southward displaced vortex over North America are forecast by the GF. S model to make the storm bomb to a 944 uh, millibar low south of Greenland. Huge waves are forecast to hit the Atlantic coast of Europe early next week. So there you go guys, very, very interesting. And once again, more confirmation, we are seeing massive changes across our planet to do with weather and climate. So I will post the article underneath the video and as always, peace out.